In this video, my good friend Rory Pascar joins me to discuss the Chicago Open 2024 Backgammon Tournament. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, what you'd like to see in future videos. Are you going to be going to this event? Let me know in the comments. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations allow me to continue creating the high quality content that you enjoy. And now I have some membership options for a small fee each month. You get exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies is available and there's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in the lessons, please contact me via email. My email is also in the description again in this video it's my great pleasure to have my good friend rory pascar joining me thank you for joining me and welcome thank you alex i appreciate you having me uh for this interview and to talk about the chicago open hope all is well with you and family. Yeah. yeah absolutely everything is good thank you for asking it's always a pleasure to see you how are you doing today good uh just been busy uh my wife and daughter and i are preparing for a full uh kitchen and other things in the house renovation that start next week so life is really busy i'm praying that this renovation is done before the chicago open kicks off but i think it's <laughs> probably gonna creep into it that's always a lot of work i know a lot of people that do that kind of stuff and it always lasts like way longer than they think it will yeah well we have a, G a general contractor and uh we won't be doing the work ourselves but i'll be somewhat hands-on uh until uh or one of available of course yeah, yeah, that's that's what people tell me. Like the the general contractors will give you like a window, and like mm -hmm. I had someone, their house took like three years past that. But it's it's always yeah, like no, 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 we're we're not going three years past. I know you you're not going to tolerate that stuff. You're you you're not the same as some of these people. So yeah, um, that's great. So you're joining us from you live in Chicago, right? Yeah, I've been here uh, just outside. I live in the city of Des Plaines, which is right, basically right next to O'Hare. I've been here 16-ish uh, years and in at this in this house, uh, and I've been in Chicago a total of about 20, 21, somewhere in there. You're, you're originally from the New England area, Boston, right? Yeah, uh, just outside Boston, a little town called Winthrop, which is literally right next to Logan Airport. When I was a kid, I could actually walk down the end of my street. Uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, walk down out of my house to the sidewalk, turned my head to the right, and I could see planes on the runway at Logan. Oh. Went through a little peninsula that jets out into the harbor. So, yeah. Great. Did you start playing backgammon when you were young out there? Yeah. Yeah, I played with my dad and uh, some of his friends when I was a little kid. And, uh, you know, it was obviously playing at a very novice level. Everything was safe as safe could possibly be on every roll. And if you ever left a shot, it felt like it was the worst thing in the history of the world. Even indir like, uh, in indirect, uh, it, was, it was a deathbed uh, mm -hmm. to get hit by ever. Uh, so, it, you know, it was a very novice level that I played as a child. Uh, I moved to Richmond, Virginia in about 1994, saw in 94, February 94, and sometime between 94 and 95, I walked to in a pool hall in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, found some people playing, including uh, Dennis Culpepper and Greg Lilly, yeah. and uh, joined them for, uh, uh, of course, I had that thought that, yeah, I'm really good at this game, so mm -hmm. I played with them for 10s instead of this other group for 3s, and uh, um learned a lesson let's just say that maybe i'm not as good as i thought i was and uh uh but i've been playing ever since yeah uh, since i'm basically competitive back in and for almost 30 years now that's great that's great i remember i used to play with my grandmother and with an opening three two she'd play 13 to eight yep yep no oh, i was that's my thought is the four one you play 13 eight uh yeah. or five two you pull, come into the seven point you, you don't leave a shot ever <laughs> yeah 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 uh okay great so you've been playing for a long time and you, you've been directing tournaments for quite some time as well when did you start doing that yeah um i uh took over the chicago open from howard in uh 2011 but in 2009 2010 i actually worked under his mentorship uh i actually asked him to stay on with me for two years uh because you know he's been do had been doing it for 30 or more at, the at that time and i thought there was no one better to learn from uh and uh, you know i had my own ideas of things i wanted to create and do but at the same time i wanted to learn the you know basics from him and so that was a great uh time in 2009 and 2010 running the chicago open with him and 2011 i took over that event so i guess it's like my 12th or 13th Chicago Open. Obviously, we lost two in uh, 2000, 2001 because of uh, 
COVID. But uh, other than that, yeah, I've been running it ever since. And this is the 42nd Chicago Open wow, wow. backgammon tournament coming up. And the ones you missed were 2020 and 21, not 2000. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, 20 and 21. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I figured it out. Yeah. Um, great. And then you've, you've also done some work in Las Vegas too, right? Yes, um, I took over the those tournaments from Howard uh, uh, post COVID, and unfortunately, uh, well, everything's been had been great until this year, uh, where the hotels in Vegas, specifically more so than anywhere else, are just being really aggressive with what they want in terms of uh, food and beverage revenue or food, uh, um, room rental, and everyone in Vegas had basically wanted at least 15 to $60,000 in room revenue or room rental or food and beverage rental revenue. And I just can't handle that. I, okay. it, we, they're, you know, it's just not feasible. Um, I'm hoping still to have something later on this year in Vegas, but it just seems impossible at this point. Yeah. yeah I remember last year, I guess um, if you can avoid the high holidays, I think that was an issue last year, right? Oh yes, it it was a bit for some of the player, uh, a few of the players. I do recall that, um, but I was, you know, try. I had moved the schedule from November, which is uh, overlapped with the International Merit Open artists, right. uh, and the the other. Actually, there's two merit events back to back now. Um, and I wanted to get away from them. So I moved to September and I was born and raised Jewish, but at the same time, I'm non-practicing now. So I wasn't thinking about it. And, uh, that may have been not the best choice. Yeah. I feel like there are many tournaments nowadays all over, not, not just the United States, but all over the world. And I think that's a good thing. And that's going to mean there are going to be multiple tournaments going on simultaneously in different areas. And, you know, that might be fine. People will go to whatever's closest to them. Sure. Uh, just uh, Vegas is somewhat of an international city for backgammon right. anyways. And the Merit Open is like the biggest tournament in the world. So right, uh, that's right, right. like the, that's the one international tournament I don't want to overlap. Of course. With, basically. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that in the world championship. Yeah. Um, good. Oh, and I remember you were going to go. Oh, were you going to go? Was it the world? No, you were going to go to the UBC final. Oh, you're yes. bringing up a, a, a sore point for me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember it was like a birthday present and then there was some sort of thing issue that came up. Yeah, my pa uh, I was going to uh, Mochi versus Sander uh, in Copenhagen and I had bought tickets and uh, a ticket, airline ticket. Um, and Mochi was very kind in helping uh, contribute to that fund because um, the uh, when the by the time they announced the dates, uh, uh, airline prices had increased, so it became somewhat unaffordable for me. But Mochi made a very nice offer. Um, he and I have been good friends for since 2010, 2011. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I was very surprised he made some kind of offer to help me with the airfare. He's like, Well, you only turned 50 once, and he did mention that since it was in Copenhagen, that almost everyone there was going to be rooting, rooting for Sander, so he would he, he would appreciate someone uh, on his side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got to tell him I'm turning fifty soon. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, so unfortunately, I didn't know about the uh, European Union rules with regards to passports, and my passport was set to expire in February, which is like three months after the event, or two two to three months. Yeah, and so uh, the EU requires your U.S. passport to be valid for six months after your last day, day of departure. Wow. So, like, I, I got to the airport and was just absolutely crushed. My soul was crushed. That In I case you go. get stuck there or something like that, yeah. right? Oh, no, yeah. Uh, the American Airlines, uh, well, the American Airline, or in this case, it was Canada Air. It was a United ticket, but on Canada Air, a partner, and uh, they denied my boarding. Or actually, they denied, I didn't even get to the gates. Uh, they did, uh, denied me a check-in. Uh, but you know what? The, they had such a high-quality stream. It was it was like you were there. Yeah, it was you awesome. Uh, uh, it, it was awesome watching it, but uh, I should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, personally, I, I'll tell you what. Like, I prefer to watch these streams, like, in my bed or on my couch or whatever, then sure. traveling, like I get tired with jet lag and stuff like that. Yeah, so but it, it would have been, I know how it is. It would have been an awesome experience. And I had planned on uh, going up to see Nev Nevzat uh, Dogen, who's a former world champion, a good friend, 
Uh, he's a Turkish gentleman, but it lives in Denmark, has been there many years, um, has a fantastic restaurant that's about three hours uh, from Copenhagen. I was going to take the train up there and spend a day with him uh, and have his dinner's restaurant. And uh, uh, Carter Maddig, who in the past yeah. I hadn't been very good, fr very friendly with, but now Kar and I are great. So I see his <laughs> posts on Facebook again. Um, he actually went to the Copenhagen this past last weekend for the Nordic Open and I posted uh, from uh, Nevzat's restaurant. He was there with Karsten and Carson's, Carson Breedle and his wife. And uh, uh, the, the sadness came upon me again that I wasn't able to make the trip. Uh, but uh, I'm glad Carter's uh, doing well and uh, was able to make this uh, fantastic trip to Copenhagen. I'm uh, a bit jealous of his uh, trip. There are a lot of great players uh, out of Chicago, and, and sometimes they're polarizing. Yeah, we, we are all big personalities, and, uh, you know, sometimes we clash a little bit, but uh, uh, I have all the respect, uh, all the utmost respect for Carter and appreciate his contribution to the game. Uh, both just uh, just his personality is overwhelmingly great, and, uh, um, you know, he's a good dude. He's fantastic, and his uh, – while we're on the topic, I have to mention the other people that are just outstanding out of Chicago, like, of course, Neil Kazaros, Bill Simborg, Bob Zavarall, and I may have yep. missed him, but you, Howard Markowitz, of course. How, yeah, he's formerly from Chicago. Uh, but yeah, all the people you may, mentioned, uh, Tim maybe is, uh, ran a club here for many years, obviously the founder of the ABT, Bill Davis, right. uh, who's really stepped away from back in and hasn't, doesn't really play, but maybe a doubles tournament here or there every once in a while. Although I do expect to see him in Novi this year being Carol's uh, send off. Um, right. you know, there's some, so many great legends, uh, uh, someone that probably predates you and back in and Herb Gerland, um, well, I I when I got to is. Chicago, uh, I, when I first got to Chicago, I guess was around the time that he passed. Uh, so I didn't really know him, but you know, he's one of the people that people, uh, one of the people that, uh, many others consider to be just one of the great gentlemen of the game from days gone by. Right, right, absolutely. So uh, we're looking forward to the Chicago tournament. Uh, it's called the Chicago Open. I have yes. here the dates are going to be May 22nd through 27th, 2024 at yep. the Hyatt Rosemont O'Hare next to the uh, O'Hare Airport, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, near the airport, about five minutes. Uh, the hotel does have a shuttle, so anyone, anyone that flies in, uh, you go to the hotel pickup area. Uh, there are two, three actually uh, Hyatt hotels in the area. There's the Hyatt place where the tournament was last year. There's the Hyatt Regency. It's not in either one of those, so don't take those airport shuttles. Take the one to the Hyatt Rosemont. Hyatt Rosemont, and you're yes. you're in the the hotel industry personally, right? I, Yes, I, I work for Marriott. Um, I've had the tournament at Sheridan's in the past and other Marriott hotels at the past. But uh, uh, this, the, the, this, I had a great relationship with the salesperson at the Hyatt Rosemont. He had been the previous director, of, uh, sales director at a, a where the hotel was uh, tournament was for many years, and uh, it's just, it worked out really well. And I did want to be close to the Rivers Casino, uh, which is a fantastic casino at O'Hare. Um, and literally we're across the street from the casino. If oh, you, yeah, if that's great. Yeah. If you're standing outside in the outside the lobby or right outside the front door, you're looking at the casino. Wow. So, wow uh, that's great. For those that like to play poker and other table games and slots, and it's across the street. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me pull up the web page here so that sure. we can see all the information is on here. Are you able to see that now? I am now, yeah. Okay. So this is beautiful. Uh I'll let you kind of guide me through it and, and talk about whatever you'd like to uh, talk about. Uh, let me know where you'd like me to go next. Or I would first like to uh, uh, give some credit to Tara Mendocino, the queen of stream uh, for building this website for me originally, I don't know, maybe eight, nine, 10 years ago. Um, it's just, you know, I had a very basic, ugly, old school website for a few years when I first started running the Chicago Open and she made the offer to help me build a gorgeous website. And, you know, I've made some uh, changes over the years, but that front page with that blue, half blue screen, uh, I, I, I absolutely love this website and I appreciate her so much for all she does for Backham and including building my website back in the day to get it started. Um, as I said, this is the 42nd year of the Chicago Open Backgammon Tournament. 
Um, it's been an honor to host it for the last 13 years. And every year where I try and feature some special event to help uh, with attendance, you know, if there's some kind of special event that's going to bring people in specifically, um, uh, it, it's just better for the tournament, better for the players. Uh, and this year I'm honored to be uh, uh, hosting the 2024 Women's World of Backgammon National Championship. Uh, it's a fantastic organization started about four, I think four or five years ago uh, by Karen Davis and uh, a few others um, blanking on their names right now, uh, but uh, they're doing a great job of promoting women in backgammon and the game to women. Uh, that's why we've seen so many, so much growth within the game. Um, you know, new players that have come around the last few years, like Cara, uh, Cara Schultz, yep. who's now the uh, chairman of the board of the USBGF. I mean, she wasn't even in the game five years ago or six years ago. Uh, it's just absolutely fabulous to see uh, so many women in prominent positions and uh, doing well in the game. Yes, that's great. So, okay. So I'm hoping happy to be having that event. Um and yeah. Um so it as it says right there, it's at the Hyatt Rosemont, right next to the casino. Uh you, there's a link to the brochure right under the uh -huh. dates. So you can click that and it will pop open the tournament brochure. Okay. Um Back in the day, people needed that to register for the tournament, but that's no longer. We have online registration. So and that you'll see that link at the top. Um, other featured events and things that are going on. Um, the great Michihito Kagiyama will be coming to Chicago once again. Uh, and previously, uh, he when I first spoke to him, um, there wasn't going to be the backgammon proficiency test. Uh, that's a, been a feature that at the Chicago Open for the last uh, five, six, seven, eight years, like maybe eight or nine years. Um, they've had 10 proficiency tests over the years. Um, and they weren't going to make one this year, but and he was going to do a, a lecture titled Gravity in Backgammon. Uh, but I'm announcing right now that there will be a proficiency test and we will have it in Chicago. Uh, so the lecture is still going to be Sunday night. But if you want to attend the lecture, you need to take the proficiency test. It's a 50 question test geared towards um all different parts of the game and it just gives you a great understanding of where your skill level is and what you ne might need to improve on uh there's so many great different types of questions uh hip counting race questions uh uh positional early game end game mid game back game they're all in that test and it, it's really a fantastic test that they're putting together and they've had so many years in the past so uh once again the back game proficiency test, proficiency test will be at the Chicago Open. The test itself is Friday night, 7 p.m., right after the dinner break. Uh, that will push the jackpot start time one hour. Uh, but uh, And then the uh, lecture on the test will be Sunday night as scheduled. Okay, very good. And then you have some other, the, the custom board, right? The board yes. event? Yeah, the, the Bob Zavarol board tournament for the first time ever at the Chicago Open. We've always had a Taki board tournament, you know, two legendary board makers, both from Chicago. Uh, Taki has been under the weather. He actually um, had some medical issues where he's been in rehab, and I think he currently still is. Hopefully, I will wish him the best. I hope you get well soon and get home and start making some more boards for people. Uh, but because of that, um, I talked to Bob, and uh, he was really excited to have his board featured uh, at the uh, Chicago Open. Uh, there's actually some limit, uh, some pictures on the website. Um, if you scroll real quickly, we'll go over there and then come back. If you go to um, uh, event info, if you hover over event info at the okay. top, and then side events, once it pops up, scroll down to the board tournament, and then you can click I think you went past it. There it is. Click that little um, blue in the text under format. The highlight, yeah. Oh, the blue oh, text. yeah. If you click, yeah, oh, wow. pop open. And so there, that's the board. I he actually handed it to me last week. So it's a nice little image of uh, has that the blue and gold colors of my Chicago open. Uh, he did a fantastic job. Has a nice uh, woolen uh, li lining uh, with a leather exterior. And those are, um, the cups are from, oh, I'm blanking on his name. There's a guy here in the state of Illinois that makes cups, and I'm just blanking. But uh, they're gorgeous backgammon cups, and it? it's just a great board. I think whoever wins it will be really happy with it. Yeah, these are beautiful. I know Bob 
personally, he's uh, not only is he a strong player, but he's been making outstanding boards for many, many years. And his are known for not, not just the high quality, but he has some unique features on his boards. Like he has uh, what's called a double rack here where you can uh, store the checkers and there's an extra space for cubes, which is nice for Chouette and a space for the, uh, is it the Victor Nar cups? Yeah, yes, Vinton, Vinton Nar, thank you. Vinton, Make Vinton sure Nar, yeah. We so can't I really, it together. I really like that. Um, you can just put that in there. Nice handle quality. I've played on them. The Merino felt wool is fantastic. The checkers glide on them. Um, so yeah, that's that's fantastic. And I I know the FM Gammon boards too. I have an FM Gammon board myself. Um, they're a great sponsor. They they have some very nice boards. They're, those are wooden boards. Um, I like the wooden boards, but they can be a little heavy for travel. The thing that I personally like myself that kind of got me to buy the FM Gammon board is that you can change the surfaces and it's like having a new board. Yeah, it, it, it is very cool. Those FM Gammon boards are fantastic. They're the ones that they use for the World Championship. All the World Championship boards in Monte Carlo are FM Gammon. Right. Um, and starting last year, I built a relationship with FM Gammon uh, after seeing them at the World Championship and just absolutely loving the quality of play on um, – on a mid price, what I would call a mid price back Emmon board. Uh, Bob Zavrol's and Taki boards are much more expensive than most FM Gammon boards, but uh, the quality of the product that they're producing is just fantastic. And uh, the winner of uh, two different events will get uh, those FM Gammon boards. There's two sponsored boards this year. You'll see them featured on the stream all weekend. They have both the Chicago Open logo and the FM logo, FM Gammon logo. Um, and uh, the, the Fuat Erdog and Ali Yildiz the, and the guys at uh, FM Gammon are just so supportive of everyone running tournaments anywhere in the world. Um, I literally, they literally donated the board. All they asked me to do is pay for the shipping. So literally my cost is very minimal and the players get the maximum benefit of these gorgeous free boards. That's great. That's great. Okay. What, what else? Should we scroll down? Um, actually, scroll back jump just a little bit. Um, oh, and I did want to mention the Zavrol board tournament is a $150 entry fee. It is limited to 16 entrants. And okay. I um I only have 36 people. Um, um actually, uh April 1st of last year, I had 12 people registered for the Chicago Open last year. April 1st of this year, I have 36. So I'm looking Great. at potentially breaking last year's re attendance record. Um, and of those 36, six of them are already registered for the uh, Zavrol board tournament. So if you guys are interested in coming to Chicago and playing in that event, you want to register sooner than later because it will be sold out before the tournament starts. So that's, that's that brings me to a really good question because sure. you and your tournaments are known for breaking attendance records. So what is it that's unique about your tournaments that makes people want to go? Because I know we, we had mentioned there are a lot of international players that come, but a lot of players domestically come. So what is it about your tournament that, that makes people like it so much? Well, when I first attended my very first backgammon tournament, uh, it was the Beltway Backgammon Ships back in 97, I think it was. Um, there were 23 people in the open and 16 in the intermediate division. And it was my first tournament. I thought this was like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I literally said to myself, uh, you know, one day I'm going to run a tournament and one day I'm going to run. The, uh, and I said, not just a tournament, but the very best tournament. And maybe I don't run the best tournament in the world, but I run a really efficient, well-run, um, well-thought-of tournament. And what I mean by that is um, when I first started actually running the Chicago Open for the first time, I actually put together a mission statement. And it had four pillars. Uh, I'm not sure I can uh, Great hospitality. Great bang for the buck, meaning uh, the hotel is a reasonably a very good price for the players. Mm -hmm. um, and education. So at the time when I first started doing it, I had two lectures at every tournament. You know, you might find one at a tournament at Chicago. There were two. Uh, one was more geared towards newer players and more geared towards advanced and uh, uh, players. Uh, stronger players and then uh the other pillar was um uh education maximum play hospitality and uh, i think mac again uh something about maximum uh bang for the buck meaning um there's lots and lots of events if you want to uh only play in two or three and relax and not kill yourself playing backgammon you're welcome to but if you want to play backgammon non-stop for five days 
Chicago is your location. I have tons of events, all different kinds of events, speed gaming, uh, master jackpots. Uh, the main event is a Swiss format, which gives people more play than uh, uh, for their single entry fee than any other tournament in the United States. In Chicago, you're actually guaranteed five matches in the main tournament because it's a four loss uh, Swiss format. But if you're eliminated after the, uh, four, if you happen to go 0 and 4 or 1 and 4 the first day, there's a free roll event called the Unlucky Dice Last Chance. And uh, I actually combine the open and intermediate people that are eliminated. If an intermediate player plays an open level player, they actually start with a 1 0 lead. And the winner of that event gets one of the sponsored FM Gammon boards. It used to be a cash prize, now it's the board. Uh, and I think there's a small amount of money for second place as well. And I, so, we'll, we'll talk about this too. You mentioned that the Swiss or the modified Swiss or the more Swiss. I have a friend here locally. He says, I always go to the Chicago tournament because I like the Swiss format. And we'll, we'll talk about the Swiss format. And he always knows when his next match is going to start. So he has time to rest between that. Um, so maybe we can go through what else? The events. Let's Let's look at the events, maybe the main event. And then we can talk about that. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, yep, you see it's a $400 entry fee. I return 90%. There's a $100 side, $100 side pool, 75%. Um, all, point, all rounds are nine-point matches. There's five rounds scheduled on Saturday, five rounds scheduled on Sunday, and since Monday is Memorial Day weekend, it's a holiday weekend, we finish on Monday, and it can take one, two, or three, usually two or three rounds to finish the tournament. And how it's long do you... Do you allocate for a, a nine-point match between rounds? Sure. Um, uh, early in the tournament, when everyone's still live, so the first day Saturday, there's two hours and 15 minutes for most spot, uh, uh, especially the early start times. Uh, the one just before dinner is actually only two hours, so if you go over, the few matches that go over two are running slightly into the dinner break. Um, but um, late as the tournament progresses, I, I change it from 2.15 to two hours. Um, and that's only because if I don't do two hours and 15 minutes in the early rounds, my rounds start late and I really don't, and players get antsy and everyone's making noise and, uh, it becomes, it, it in the early years of running this format, I figure it out. I need to give two hours, 15 minutes to those early rounds, especially, uh, for the first couple, uh, first few rounds on the first day. Yeah, um, you need to just, run on time. You run, you run a tight yeah. ship, Rory. I, I, I try to run a, a very efficient tournament. Um, and so originally the open championship was nine points and the intermediate division was clocks, uh, preferred, meaning if either player wanted to use the clock, they could, um, I helped St. Louis kick off their tournament a few years ago. And right when we were starting the tournament, we had announced that that was the format, but I asked the intermediates, all the people that were at the auction and tournament announcements. I said to the intermediates, I said, in the past, I've always run seven points clocks optional. If you guys want, and it has to be unanimous since it's a change to what I did put in the brochure, if everyone wants to play nine points, clock's mandatory, we will make that change. And literally, I made that change on the spot because it was 100%. There was one person that showed up late, uh, right, right when they were playing, and he said, well, I wouldn't have voted that way. I'm like, well, then you should have been here for the tournament announcements. We were playing <laughs> nine-point matches, clock's mandatory. Uh, yeah. And I, that's what I've done at Chicago ever since. And the intermediate players uh, or advanced players, depending on what you want to call the division, they really appreciate playing that slightly longer match. And they're not worried about the clock anymore. Uh, I mean, I have like one person maybe clock out in one match out of three hundred, three to 400 matches every year at my tournament. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, it, it people just you know you play at a reasonable pace you're never going to time out i mean it, it's just you know your mochis and mcgs and other uh maybe uh, some others that really challenge themselves and get uh tight on time every single match that should be concerned but for the most part if you play at a reasonable pace you're never going to time out in a backgammon match it's just so hard to do that's true, um, that's true. so we have a lot of viewers that are familiar with the traditional brackets of maybe 1632 or yep. whatever uh but they may not be familiar with the swiss format can you please explain how that works as compared to the traditional format sure um so swiss is essentially a modified round robin if you're familiar with round robin that means it, yeah say you have uh six players everyone plays every other player for six rounds. So it takes six rounds, I was like five rounds to complete because there's five other players, everyone plays everyone. 
when you once you get over so many uh, players, you can't have everyone playing everyone. So it's what we call a modified Swiss event. And what that means is, is you're going to play a different person in each round based on win loss record. So at the start of the tournament, instead of a bracket, it's just a list of pairings. So, uh, you know, one person versus another and so on down the list. Um, once you start the second round, then the field has half the field is one and oh, and the other half is oh and one. Then those players in those two separate groups are then randomly paired up. In the third round, the two and O's are paired up, the one and ones are paired up, and the O and twos, and so on and so forth. Once you receive your fourth loss, unfortunately, you are eliminated. But once again, as I said, if you lose uh, O and four or one and four on the first day, you do get that free roll into the unlucky dice last chance. But then we progress the tournament throughout uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then finish it on Monday. And the winner with my Swiss system, since it's a four loss elimination system, the winner is actually the last person remaining with fewer than three losses. So once you get your third loss, you're basically in your last chance scenario. But instead of like traditional tournaments where you're playing five <laughs> or sevens in the last chance, you're still playing nine point matches. Usually it takes uh, eight wins and three losses to cash in one of my events. So uh, be ready for a long weekend of playing lots of backgammon and, and hopefully winning and cashing. And this is um, what you were talking about. The yep. format is stated here and the unlucky yep. dice last chance. Yep. So that's good. Okay. There is one other thing I wanted to say about the Swiss format. Give me yes, two seconds please. to think about it. Um, sorry, you might have to edit here. That's okay. So I know the Swiss format is is people just like it because they get to play a lot rather than you know losing twice and being eliminated. Uh, yes, that's, that's uh, it, what people it, like it. about it. And it's a very technical format in the sense that there's a lot of uh, rules to the format itself, where once again, you're playing people with common records. And once you're, uh, yeah, there was something else I couldn't remember what it was, but okay. um, yeah. And so at the start of the tournament, we do decide how, uh, based on the number of players, how many people will cash. And that also determines when we stop play for the three loss players. And it's, once okay. again, usually if with the three losses, you're finished after the 11th round if you've gone eight and three. Okay, great. Um, so let's see. We had we went through the event info. That's the main event. There's a side yeah. events we could look sure, at. I'll uh, list off some of the side events in the feet. Obviously, right at the top, there's that featured women's national championship. Right. Um, I hope we get record number of women attendees here in Chicago, and we really sell at like 32 spots or more in that event. Um, super excited. The winner will also get a absolutely gorgeous. I've seen the pictures of it. Um, and I actually sent them on. Uh, I just don't have them on the website uh, of a Bel Air watch that was donated by the Alan Joan Grenwald fund. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you know Alan, but uh, he used no, to he uh, own or run the Bel Air watch uh, company or his own company. And they featured Bel Air watches. Uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. And the finalists were received that lavender women's world of back and art game and board. I don't know if you've seen them out on the tour, but there's, there are a few women that have them. I know Carol has one. I'm sure Karen Davis has one as well as a few others. I think it's just gorgeous. The color scheme. Um, it, it, it's definitely a, a, more for women the color but i mean i would I, I would love to own one of those boards i think it's absolutely gorgeous it's not overly effeminate it's just it's just a beautiful backgammon board yes. um and so whoever win uh loses in the final that is a fantastic prize for the second place person right. um uh, continuing on, we have the Players' Cup BMAB. Uh, if people aren't may not be familiar with that title, but what has been historically BMAB tournaments, uh, Roberto Litzenberger and Dimitri created this organization called the Players' Cup. And so that's the name of these tournaments now, the Players' Cup BMAB. Um, and it's all the matches are recorded and transcribed. Uh, there's five rounds of seven point, I'm sorry, five rounds of nine point matches. You'll get all the full analysis uh, of all these matches and get a BMAB rating. Uh, and also you get to a better understanding of your PR. If you're someone that takes lessons, you can actually take these matches to the person um, that gives you your lessons and he can actually write uh, a lesson plan based on how you performed in these matches. I know of quite a few uh, instructors that do such a thing and I highly recommend it. I think it's really one of the best ways to get better at the game is to understand your own mistakes. 
And for people that are not familiar with it, BMAB stands for Backgammon Masters Awarding Body, started by the World Backgammon Federation with Bernhard Meyer and the late Rick Janowski, who's famous for the Janowski formula. But this one, so it, you get points for winning the, the match and also for having a better PR or performance rating. So those are all measured, and they have people that actually transcribe and do all of that for you. Yeah, it, so it's a $125 entry fee, uh, which is 100% return, but you do see that there's a $75 registration transcription fee. That's because it takes hours and hours and hours to um, transcribe these matches, but also they're providing all the recording equipment. They have the stands, the, um, the cameras, uh, the clocks, if necessary. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's a full setup. They bring case, suitcases of equipment to these tournaments, and it costs them money to put put this it event is. on. So, so I think the cost of seventy five for the recording and transcription is very reasonable. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I wish I could play in more of these myself. Yeah. Uh, all right. And then the Markowitz Masters, named after Howard Markowitz, of course. Yep, the legend that is Howard Markowitz, who helped start the uh, Chicago Open back in 1980 or 81 originally. Um, it's a $600 entry fee. I do return 90% with a side pool. Um, it is a single elimination event with uh, rebuys. Uh, there's also, you can start either of the first two um, start times for my jackpots. I actually have four. That's, oh, you asked why, uh, how I bring more people in and how I I make my events more popular is yeah. uh, every decision I make regarding the tournament is to benefit the players. What can I do to make this tournament better for the players? And one thing I've come up with is this idea of having multiple start times for the jackpots. And so there's event start, uh, there's three start times on Thursday and one more on Friday. So if you can't get here till Thursday night, you can play Thursday night. If you happen to lose, you can rebuy for the start time on Friday. If you're able to get here and play in the BMAB event, uh, there is an overlap between the BMAB and the first start time. So you can then start in the second start time. I try to make this as accommodating as possible when I write the schedule. I think about the players and what they want and what they need to have a great back in experience over the weekend. I feel so, that's very important. Have you gotten like specific feedback? Do you ask people for feedback or they happen to give it to you? Or uh, yes, I haven't I haven't done it in a few years, but uh, for like five years consecutively, I was using a uh, survey monkey and sending out a, uh, a survey after the tournament to all the attendees and asked them, you know, it, it didn't take but two, three, four minutes, if, especially if you weren't providing any specific comments, just to click a dialogue box after reading the question. Uh, and most, almost, I had like 80% of the people actually filled out the survey for me. And it really gave me a great understanding of what, how I could tweak things to make it better for the players, for sure. Getting feedback from the players is the only way to make the tournament better. Uh, you know, I, or if, if I come up with something new, I, I talk to like 20 different, 20, 30 different people and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this next year. What do you think? And, you know, if if it's uh, some people hate my idea <laughs> and it's overwhelming, then I don't. But it, uh, usually I come up with something creative and interesting and players usually like it. That's that's actually outstanding. I have to commend you for that. I wish there were more people that would, you know, proactively ask uh, for feedback and use that into account Uh a lot of the people who have been running tournaments have been running it uh, for a very long time. And I feel like when they started doing it decades ago, things were in a certain way. And nowadays, you know, we have the Internet, we have all sorts of things. So things have changed. Um, so providing new and different, you know, formats or whatever um, is actually helpful for people. So, so thank you for doing that. Um, Absolutely. There's, there's the faster masters, which is the similar thing, but uh, faster clocks, one minute and ten seconds, right? Right. Right. Yeah. It's it's kind of uh, 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 not headed towards speed game. And there are people like me that don't use a lot of clock. I actually, when I first started playing with clocks it actually slowed me down because when I finished a nine point match, I'd still have 17 minutes and change on my clock uh -huh. and figured, well, if they give you 18 minutes, you probably shouldn't have 17 minutes and change left at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so actually playing with the clock slows me down. Uh, but I still enjoy a faster paced game and right. that's what the faster master is all about. And I have a lot of people that play in that event every single year. Uh, but actually, I just wanted to mention on the, the Masters, Macroids Masters, it is a $600 entry fee, which I understand is a lot of cash, 
but if you are able to come and play in Thursday's first or second start time, you can do a optional um, uh, $300 qualifier and start a round earlier. Um, so you can save, uh, you know, still play in the event for half price. I you see, just have I to see. play an extra round. Okay, very good. Uh, very good. For the um, lower open level players that aren't uh, masters jackpot ready, let's just say, uh, and some of the very strong intermediate players, we have the limited jackpot. Um, basically, I look at the open uh, open division and anyone that I think, uh, I try and f figure out who I think is the middle level player in the open division, and anyone at that level or lower is allowed to play in the limited jackpot. Uh, and then for the intermediate players, we also have the intermediate jackpot. I only allow intermediate level players, people registered in the intermediate division, play in the intermediate jackpot. Very good, very good. And then, of course, we have everyone's favorite doubles tournament, which is uh, all players' favorite in every director's nightmare <laughs> of the weekend. <laughs> uh, just trying to uh, get, uh, get all the players together uh, in those late rounds can be quite difficult and uh, arduous for the tournament directors. But it's a signature event at every tournament. I almost always play doubles. I love it. It's a great social event event in the back game and weekend uh you know when you're playing the championship or the master's jackpot i mean you're so focused and you, you know it it, it, it the playing doubles it just changes the whole dynamic and becomes a great social event uh mm -hmm. especially if you have an open player playing with an intermediate that intermediate player has just a great option uh, chance to learn so much from that open player and that you know one two three four matches that they're playing as you see, we also have the Zavrol board tournament that we've mentioned before. Um, it's gorgeous. Uh, I'm so happy that we're doing Zavrol for the first time. Uh, yeah. Of course, traditional speed game as well. Um, two minutes with a uh, seven. Uh, instead of, I think traditional speed game in the U.S. has been a, a five-point match with a one-minute total bank and 10-second delay. This is a little bit slower. It's two minutes and 10 seconds, uh, to two minute total bank, but you also, it's a seven point match instead of a five point match. Um, maybe I could chop that to 90 seconds instead of two minutes uh, to make it more like, uh, but I like playing seven point matches rather than five. So, um, and I think most of the players do as well. And I think we need, to, we need to fix something here. I see that only in backgammon is juniors oh. under 60. We need to we need to get younger players in the game so that juniors event is like under 40 or 30 or something like that. Yeah, but the thing is, there actually should be a gap. <laughs> there should be a middle age. Because if, if, say, we even if I, in Vegas for a while, I actually had changed it to under uh, 50 or an over 50. Uh, and like, uh, uh, someone that's 51 uh, well i turned 50 in december i'm not i'm not a senior what do you mean i'm still a junior <laughs> so uh there's yeah, there's that event uh, okay. and actually the winner of that event uh in the past had gotten a 500 hundred dollar um a bonus prize uh so basically the juniors and seniors are two separate brackets completely 32 or 64 players usually and then the winner of each plays each other in the past for a 500 dollar bonus and a seat at the usbgf national championship in um uh at the uh cherry blossom event which is actually the next abt event i think it's just two weeks away run by yeah. ben Fries and organized organized by karen davis yeah uh but um, there is not going to be a USBGF national championship or there is not the $500 bonuses that uh, a donor had given towards the, all these tournaments years ago. Um, so uh, I'm using the FM GAM and logo board, uh, one of the two that they sent me for the winner of this event. Um, and I'll be honest, every once in a while I go to a tournament and like I was in, uh, where was I? Uh, the last tournament. What was the last tournament? Uh was it cleveland? cleveland 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 yeah i went to cleveland and i saw one of the uh, uh someone playing on a previous year chicago open back in the board it's just nice to see the yeah. uh people playing on the board that they won at my tournament years in the years prior uh great, just a great. personal moment of joy to see uh them i'm like gorgeous board where'd you get that you know? uh, <laughs> that's fantastic um, so this is great in the interest of time we'll move a little bit of faster i know sure. we mentioned some of these the blitz the quickies 
Yeah, and blitz quickly in the after tournament tournament, which is just uh, something gives the players that are staying over Monday night to Tuesday something to do into the early evening. Uh, but it's just uh, one final little event for the tournament weekend. Good, good. And then uh, there's a registration link, which we'll yes. go through briefly. It's basically kind of what we discussed, but here you kind of just click on what you'd like to play in, and it's all like electronic, yep. BMAB, all these ones, and that, that makes things really nice. Yes. Uh, what else? And you we... can either pay in advance by sending me Ve Venmo, Zelle, right. or PayPal, or you can pay cash on site. I actually do also take checks in the mail, although yeah. I, don't, I, I think I, I don't get it nearly as many as I used to. I'll be honest. <laughs> right, right. I, I think we didn't see the local restaurants. And I think that's that's uh, something that you do a lot. Like you have a lot of local restaurants that help sponsor it. So that's great. Yeah. Uh, last year, um, I realized for the first time I wasn't doing the full hospitality that I'd done in the past, which is providing multiple meals. So I went to all these different restaurants and many of them, all the ones that you see the little dark black bold on the name uh -huh. had uh, uh -huh. given some kind of gift certificate or discount off of uh, purchases. One of the restaurants, True Lux, under the formal dining at the top, actually gave me a $250 gift card that uh -huh. uh, the great Ray Foglin luckily uh, got had his name pulled for that one. And he took Ari Nagera, a great player from Brazil, uh, and a couple others to dinner at that amazing fantastic steak and seafood restaurant and i see um, you have them numbered starting at five is that where they start counting in no, Chicago? No, there's, there's a map on the website i think it's oh. towards the top or link and i have uh oh that location of the map it's in the blue text right there at the the first paragraph oh, oh i see and then and then that five is like oh, the location on the oh map okay next. that's how it is yeah so so it basically okay. lets people know this is where the tournament hotel okay. is, and this is how you know where where the restaurant is located. Right, and everything's right. within five to ten minutes maximum. Yeah. I'm not gonna uh, recommend a restaurant that's thirty minutes away. Right, right. Um, okay, and then the schedule. It's basically kind of what we discussed, but if people want to see the exact days and times, they could just go here. They click on schedule, and it just shows everything. Yep, everything's there. These and trophies there's a, are beautiful. Yeah, that I bought. I bought. Uh, I've been doing this using this trophy since basically I started running Chicago. I used to go to uh, a little uh, souvenir Chicago souvenir shop, but I actually ordered basically eight years worth of trophies directly from China years ago. So I have a huge supply. <laughs> That's uh, what you have. Let's say again. You you have them already. Great. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. I've had, I've been using them. I think I have only like two years left, but and I'll have another uh, place another <laughs> order. But um, actually, I'm a huge baseball fan, uh, and I appreciate the history of the sport and other things. And um, I don't know if you know this, but um, I, I don't know if you're a big baseball fan, but there's a gentleman by the name of Jackie Robinson that broke the color barrier back yeah. in, I believe, was 57. I'm terrible at remembering years. Right. Um, but uh, and his number was 42 and Major League Baseball retired his number every team has the number 42 retired yeah I and jackie robin then every day every year on his birthday i think it's his birthday um every anyone in major league baseball is actually allowed to wear that number on that day only and their entire like, the entire dodgers team wears number 42 on jackie robinson day i think it's fantastic yeah well this this year is the 42nd year of the chicago open ah. so I am actually trying to work okay. out and I've contacted the Jackie Robinson Foundation and Museum in New York, which actually just opened this past year. I don't know if you know this, but there's a Jackie Robinson mm -hmm. Museum now in New York that Joe opened within the last year. Oh, um, I and I'm that. trying to find get an image of him that can be etched into glass or something like that, like this trophy. And if I'm able to, this year's trophy only will be a special Jackie Robinson image trophy for the 42nd chicago open that's fantastic that's fantastic yeah. and then it kind of combines my love of this game and baseball yeah. and appreciation of history and so on there's and my ugly mug right there contact you here oh that's the chicago okay and then the hotel they can just click here um yep. to do that let me come out of this so the, that was that was an outstanding overview of the tournament it looks like it's it's a lot of fun that's why you get a lot of people. You've got a lot going on. Uh, what yeah, else? I put my heart else? and soul into 
Yeah. yeah, I just put my heart and soul into this. Uh, it's something I really care greatly about and put in terms of putting on the best show possible for the players. I want them to have a, come to Chicago, have a great experience, tell friends about it, and bring more people. And uh, that explains why the last three years I've run this, basically, I've had record attendance. So, uh, And uh, uh, it looks like I'm on my way to breaking the record again. So I'm mm-hmm. excited. Congratulations. I must uh, express my gratitude for all the things that you do uh, for this tournament and in backgammon and in general. It's a pleasure to have you on the board of directors at the USBGF. And now I recently joined that too. So it's a pleasure to work with you there and you do so much. So thank you very much for everything you do. Yeah. And you as well. Um, you, you've uh, done a lot in the last couple of years, especially. Uh, and it's great to see you now on the board and uh, giving you've had some great ideas. I've been in the board of meetings with you and um, you're get, kind of giving us some fresh perspective on how to do certain things. And I appreciate that greatly. I think the content that you're providing uh, to help promote tournaments and just back in and in general is just fantastic. Uh, five stars, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's It's been a pleasure, you know, in the last year or two, uh, business has been a little slow, so I have more time for my hobbies, and this is basically my main hobby. <laughs> so yeah. so uh, I've had time to do it. They say, you know, if there's something you enjoy, you do more of it, and and it becomes easy. So thank you for that. I, I really appreciate it. Do you have any final comments before we conclude this video? Uh, just looking forward to seeing everyone in uh chicago in a couple months uh i guess we're like seven weeks away uh i probably won't be going to any terms before then but uh sometime shortly thereafter i likely will be going to carol's first tournament so um uh you know i'm obviously this is to plug my chicago tournament but carol joy cole is a legend in this game and uh it's amazing that she's been doing as long as she has and it's gonna be sad to see her uh step away from the game but uh you should show up to novi this summer uh it's gonna be likely be the biggest Michigan tournament ever. And uh, she deserves all the accolades for, oh, actually it's one thing I didn't mention about the tournament is she will have her back in boutique here in Chicago. Oh, great. Oh, that was the other pillar is uh, the accessibility to uh, equipment, boards, uh, dice, clocks, uh, baffle boxes, books, uh, everything. She brings her back in a boutique. It's a featured thing every year at the Chicago open every year I've ever run Chicago. She's had her boutique here. Um, so if you want equipment, you know, come to Chicago and you can get it. <laughs> Carol Joy Cole um, is one of the, on the Mount Rushmore of women oh, in yeah. backgammon. She's been running her tournaments for over 40 years, uh, has these, this, her online store, um, and just like an amazing person, this is going to be her last tournament and then someone else will take over, but it's always a great tournament in, uh, Michigan uh, in the Detroit area on the weekend, usually of the 4th of July Independence Day. Uh, that is correct. Yep. Uh, and yours is a Memorial Day. And mine is Memorial Day. Yeah, it's another holiday weekend tournament. So, uh, uh, yeah. Um, it, it, Memorial Day is a long holiday weekend for the Chicago Open. It's a great tournament. Um, it, we care about the players. We do everything I, every decision I make obviously is to hopefully make the tournament a little better for me, but it's really about being better for the players. As I said, yeah, um, I think the, having a holiday weekend gives you an extra day and helps, helps out a lot. Yeah. It allows me to do this uh, four loss elimination tournament uh, with the Swiss format and players love it. And I think the, the Swiss, uh, uh, I'm sure that's one of the number one uh, reasons why people come to Chicago for that event. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, wonderful. So again, the Chicago Open Backgammon Tournament in 2024 will be May 22nd through the 27th on Memorial Day weekend in 2024 at the Hyatt Rosemont O'Hare uh, Hotel in Chicago. Thank you very much uh, for, to Rory. I really appreciate seeing my good friend. We'll go ahead and conclude the video. Thank you to the viewers for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. If you're going to the upcoming tournament, please let me know in the comments. 
I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high quality content that you enjoy. Now I have a membership option where you can get exclusive access to the most popular videos. And again, my book, Backgammon and Backgammon and Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. I look forward to seeing everyone in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.